Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to get ready. Whilst I'm answering some of your most asked questions, um, I put a poll up on a few of my socials this week and I asked you guys to please ask me the most juiciest questions you can come up with, which I'm not a very juicy person, so, so I'm going to answer them whilst doing my makeup. So let's get into it. Right, put my hair back. Okay. I've got all my makeup here, which is a little bit annoying because I have to sit quite far back. I've never been huge on primers, but one thing I use that every single makeup artist I've ever been to around me has used on my skin to prep for it is this one. And I know it's like the past year it's blown up on TikTok. I've been using it for so long because every makeup artist I went to uses this so, and it smells so nice. So this is just the Willida Skin Food, the dark green one I use when I'm doing my makeup. I use the other one, the lighter one, just like everyday wear. So first question is, I'll just start easy. How long have you and Tom been together and how did you meet? Okay, so me and Tom have been together since we were 17. I had just turned 17. I was in my first year of sixth form. I'd just broken up with my boyfriend of like six months. I don't even know how long we were together, but like my first boyfriend. Up. We broke up the week after V-Fest, because I remember V-Fest was horrendous, because we were like, he just hated me. We broke up the week after V-Fest. So that was what, like, start September. And then me and Tom had our first date at the cinema. Um, we went to the cinema in Liverpool and we watched, what did we watch? This is really bad, It. I feel like I've, I've been to cinema twice on two first dates and both times I've watched a scary film. I don't know, I think it's just the boy ends up choosing it and they just choose a scary film, don't they? So I've gone in with this. We watched It, we met up. This is the first time we'd ever met in person. We knew of each other because like where we live, it's a very small place, like everyone knows everyone. The flawless filter that everyone's on. I've been using it for quite a few years to be fair. This shade, shade four, um, because I felt like the three was a little bit light for me. And my mum used the four and I really liked how it came out on her. So I'm gonna use that. So we went for our first date at the cinema. And yeah, when we were like, when you're 17, you're like pretty much just like move that quick, don't you? So. We were like seeing each other for a couple months and then um, he asked me to be his girlfriend in November, December, so like two months. And then he didn't really have a room at his mum's. So um, in like January, February the next year, um, it, we'd been together for like three months or something. My mum and dad were like, do you want Tom to move in? Because obviously he spent a lot of time at my house anyway. Um, and he was like traveling back and forth, traveling back and forth and obviously not having a bed at his house. I was like, well, it's every 17 year old um, girl's dream, isn't it? To have their boyfriend living with them and like feel dead grown up. Looking back, probably wasn't the best thing, but was like, we had to kind of do it because I felt so tight on him not having a room. Going in with my Chloe marshmallow sponge. I've never got it to go back to pink. Like, you know, it comes like dead cute and pink. So if anyone has any tips, I've not tried putting it in the washing machine yet because I want, I want to know what you guys, how you guys clean this first. I just like hand wash it with some soap. Anyway, right. So we moved in together. He lived with my mum and dad. And um, yeah, that was it until we moved into this place. So we've pretty much lived together since we met really, like three months different, although we stayed at mine every night anyway. So that is kind of how we met. I feel like we met because he played rugby and I was friends with a couple of boys on the rugby team. And they were like, oh, Tom really wants to like start speaking to you because in those days you'd like speak to each other on Snapchat. Um, so I was like, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. And then I think I actually popped up because I was like, why is he taking so long to pop up? And I really fancied him. So I was like, do you know what? I said that thing where it's like, do you remember them things you used to send? It was like, um, what did it, what was the things that we have when we used to send? It was like, and it's like a, like a few people and used to be like, pop up if you're bored or like pop up or whatever. So I sent it just to him, but I made out as if I'd sent loads of people and then he popped up off that. And then yeah, the rest is history. Um, so yeah, that's how we met. Started speaking on Snapchat as you do and then went on our first date a couple of weeks later. Right, next question is, what was the most expensive part of the house? Let me think. I should have really got my answers ready for this, but I kind of just did this. I'm just filming this after work. It's expensive part of the house. Probably our garden. I left our garden to last because we'd like spent up on everything. Obviously collectively the house costs more than the garden. But if we're talking like individual expenses, we obviously just got like one person, one landscaper to come in. I'm going in with the Charlotte Tilbury, um, what's it called? Beautiful Skin Foundation. 
Um, I like a full coverage and I don't know if this is like super cut full coverage but again like I feel like you just stick with what you know like this is the second time I bought this and like I just I don't have the confidence to like go out and buy a completely new one because I know that this kind of works. So, so we got the house done. This is my thing I got for Christmas. I asked for it from my mum. She bought it me. Um, P. Louise like believe in the bristles brush that. I actually really like it. They're really nice brushes. Oh. Pay, we've paid off our well we'd like finished our house pretty much everything was finished it and we were like oh we ran out of money and we moved in in august so it was kind of annoying like not having a garden for that period but we were like do you know what let's not like skin ourselves by trying to like afford it now we'll save up and um we'll get it done like in spring the next year because like we don't exactly need a garden like, like now like as soon as september comes we won't we won't need it um but oh my god like not having a garden sounds like it's just a garden but because our house was built on like a building site the actual garden it wasn't like a, it had never been a garden it was just like mud and dirt so when we had to let the dogs out for a wee and stuff they would come in and like they would be like just so dirty so it made the house like super super dirty so that was a pain so anyway we saved up for it again and then we got a quote because we were like we can't bear this anymore i think we think we got some quotes around like like this time last year like february march last year and, oh my god guys gardens are so expensive i thought because we were up north like it won't be that expensive but i think the size of it was quite a big garden and i wanted what well, i thought i was like you know what? i'm just gonna do it like cheap and stuff i just want like paving and then i just want um astro turf because i wasn't actually going to get astro turf and then like everyone's taught me into it because obviously i've got like four dogs and if they're peeing on it it's just going to kill the grass and like to buy like you would have to buy grass seeds and it would take ages to grow if it was going to grow you get patchiness like it's just not a vibe so i was like fine i'll get extra turf whatever that obviously added cost to it the whole garden came to like 25 grand so we just like every week would like pay towards that um so that was probably our most expensive because obviously i did say like oh i just want a really simple garden and then it came to it and like the landscape was like are you sure like it's such a big garden it's gonna like look really boring and i was like mm. and tom was like yeah we just want it simple and then i like, had seen like in ideas on pinterest and he was like yeah we can do this we can do that ended up with like a sunken fire pit like a barbecue area <laughs> stepping stones like everything and i was like do you know what if i'm gonna do that i'm gonna do it properly but yeah um right next question when do you think you'll have kids because obviously this this house is a three bedroom house. We could have made it a four bedroom house. We are planning for a four bedroom, but um, it meant that the, meant our spare room was gonna be super, super small. It was gonna be really compact. Like would have struggled to fit like a proper size bed in it. Like it probably would have been like a double. And I'm just not a fan of double bed personally. Like I would think like when you have guests over, it's just like really uncomfortable. And like, if, I don't know, like obviously we've had to use the spare room so much recently because of Tom's accident. He hasn't been able to sleep in my room, like bed with me because A, the dogs and like, I don't want to knock him so it's kind of been a godsend that we did actually like prioritize the spare room space because it would have just been really bad if he'd had to be in that like tiny room when do we have kids i don't know i could not tell you because we want to get married before we have kids and i have obviously we're not engaged so it's probably going to be a few few good years um we do really 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 want kids because i want my mum and dad to be massively involved with them because i think they'd be the most amazing grandparents ever and because we live so close it would just be perfect they'd be like super involved like i didn't really have an involvement with my grandparents um my nan died like when i was really young and then my grandma's had already been in my life so to have like i've always like missed out on that like closeness of grandparents so i would think that's one thing i'd really really want for my kid to have like really close relationship with um, my mom and my dad so i do really want to have kids um just not really anytime soon really because we want to get married first and that's not just like I think you can do it whatever way you want personally we just want to have like some time just us two not that we've not had seven years already just us two but i want to have some time just being married ideally we have kids after we get married so in the next five six years because also i haven't got a nursery and i'm either gonna have to give up my dressing room or the spare room it's gonna probably be the spare room because i can't give up my dressing room right my concealer i'm going in with is the Multitasker Concealer by Rimmel in the shade, I've always wanted to say that, in the shade Ivory. Do you think you'll move out? Because obviously like, 
I feel like quite a lot like it's not a huge house I think our friends say that to a lot like do you think you'll be there forever in this house it's so hard because it is our dream home like every single I picked out <laughs> I'm not even gonna like say that Tom picked out anything because he didn't um and that's not like his uh, he just wasn't in well not not interested he just said I'm leaving it to you he was working full time at that time and he was like I just trust you with everything and like he didn't like he's not really interested in stuff like that like he he was just like you'll do it best I'd asked for his opinion on a couple things and whatever but ultimately everything was my decision so this is like our dream home because he absolutely loves what I've done with it so I think it's so difficult because obviously it's not like the biggest house ever like it's like you know three bedrooms there's no like like playroom there's no like office study everything's like on like downstairs like completely open plan there's not like other segregations of rooms there's only like one tv room so it's really difficult because I'd like to say we'd want to stay here forever but it's just like space so I don't really know there's the answer to that I think we're going to just see what happens um I don't know where we'd want to move to because like this is just perfect like we literally live right next door to my mum and dad um and like we live like kind of in the middle of nowhere which is great because I have spoken about this before we were looking to buy a new build but then we looked into like all the rules and stuff and you're only allowed like a certain number of dogs on on like red row and things like that it has some really strict rules and that just wasn't gonna work for us because um well you guys know I have four dogs and they're not the quietest because you can hear them on majority of my TikToks never mind if you live next to us and like they're screaming for their breakfast so I was like super worried about that like that would just stress me out another thing we have like people around a lot and that would really stress me out if we've got complaints and stuff so yeah I've kind of grown up not really having neighbours so it would just be a big thing to us to go to have neighbours which brings me back to I don't know where we would move to <laughs> because everywhere is so close together now uh, the only neighbours I have is my mum and dad, really, which is sound because, you know, well, yeah, I got, luckily I got on extremely well with my mum and dad. Well, that's one I'm really nice. That's a really nice concealer. So, the I don't know is the answer to that one. If I could extend this house, if I could double this house, I would never move. And I would just like, everyone's always like, do, do you want like, you know, a venture out? Because obviously I've lived in the same village my whole life. Of course I do. I'm just going to go on holidays and I'm going to have this as like my little safe space because I just love it here. I absolutely love it. Right, should I go in with bronzer? I'm going in with the same um, multitasker concealer, but this is in the shade Mocha. I'm just going to use it as a um, bronzer. Right, next part is... Okay, next question is, what celebrity house do you like the most and what celebrity house do you like the least? Right. Let me think about this because I spend a lot of time looking at celebrity houses because obviously I do my restyles and stuff. Um, I'm going to have to say my favourite house is Khloe Kardashian's. Like, you know when you see snippets of it on the Kardashians? Like, oh my God, the new house she's just built. It's just... Oh, I love it. I love it so much. It's sure it's got like crystal windows. It's got like high ceilings. Everything's like neutrals, but it's got like pops of color and pink and pink peonies and roses and oh yeah. It's just perfect. Open fires. Hers, I love Kylie's. I love Chris's. Not a huge fan of Kim's. It's just too minimalist for me. But if we're talking UK, I actually don't know. Is that really bad? I think the Shep's house. I don't know if it's Billy or if Billy Shepherd's house. Um, her study is really cute. It's got like Jonathan Adler stuff. It's got like um, Slim Aaron's like a feel to it. So that's really nice. Go go, go check her homepage out. I really like. And obviously Molly Mays. I do really like a house. I have said that I don't like Bambi's um, crib. I'm not a huge fan of the acrylic crib, so that wouldn't be happening at the court. But um, I do really like a house. Least favorite house. It's really difficult because majority, I'm going to be honest, majority of people's houses that I see in terms of celebrities, I'm not a huge fan of because I think they get gifted a lot of stuff and they kind of like accept it. Obviously, like you want to get gifted free stuff. I get it. Like I would be like, yes, 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 give it me. But I think they get it and they're like, it doesn't necessarily go with their vibe, but obviously they have to like advertise that they've got it in their house because the company's paid them to. And as a result, it's like all just like, all over the place like nothing really flows nothing really matches so i think that can happen a lot especially with like uk celebs love island celebs like stuff like that like you know they come out of love island probably and they've got like loads of people wanting to gift them stuff and whatever but 
I think that can happen a lot. Like with the money some of them have, the houses could be stunning. And that like style and like having the flow, having the same style flow through your house, just like, oh, it's everything. Like I don't like a mismatched house. Like every room looks like it's a different like style of decor. Like no. I don't want to be mean and like pinpoint someone, but the person who's sticking in my head is Georgia Steele. But I think that's just because I've looked at hers recently. Um, and I'm just imagining that teal bed that she's got in her spare room and I'm just like, <laughs> why would you get a teal, teal bed if you get it for free off the luxury bed company? I don't know. Just someone I've picked out off the top of my head because I've just done hers recently. And I've also done Joanna Sim Shim Shimmons. Not a huge fan of hers either. But that's not like the worst. It's just the first that comes to my head. I should have probably looked. Um, I'm going in with me, Charlotte Tilbury. Can we see? Is it going to focus? But in my Charlotte Tilbury, what is this called? The Pink Asm one that everyone has. So yeah, off the top of my head, I'm going to say them. I also really like Sam Thompson's and Zara's is quite nice. I did not like, then this might be a bit controversial, I wasn't a huge fan of Olivia Bowen's and Alex's old house. Yeah, I wasn't a huge fan of it. So I'm excited to see what they do with this new house that they bought and they're renovating. This one. How did you get into interiors? So, I get asked a lot if I have like qualifications in interior design. I don't. I don't have any qualifications apart from my A levels that I left school with, um, which weren't bad qualifications, but they definitely weren't interior design based ones. I didn't. I didn't do art or anything for A level. I did it for GCSE. Hated it because like, I just find everyone's amazing art that takes art, and I'm just like nope. So I did maths, psychology, and economics. So nothing to do with interior design. I don't know, I've always like been interested in people's houses. Like I used to read like Architectural Digest when I was little and stuff. And I loved MTV Cribs, like, oh my God, I absolutely loved it. So I guess you could say I've like, you know, always been into it. But I think when I had the house opportunity, I kind of just like, it wasn't even a question of whether I was gonna try and get an interior designer. I just kind of knew what I wanted. Spent hours and hours and hours on Pinterest youtube like looking at celebrities homes looking at like interior designers homes and how they've done it and, and going around a lot of show homes because like when you go around red row and like that like all that you need to remember that like they get like specialist designers in to like make the space look the best it can make the space look the biggest it can so i kind of took tips from that and like the way they'd like fit everything in so yeah so anyway did the house didn't really think anything of it and then the builders who did it were like, oh my God, can we use this as like an example for our work? Like, they'd never done like a project this big. They were like, we want to like bring people around because it's like, looks like a show home. And I was like, yeah, that's fine. And then I started sharing it across social media and everyone was like, oh my God, like, it just had like a, a, an amazing response. Like I could never have ever guessed that this was going to turn into that. So I started just sharing the house. And then one day I was scrolling through my Instagram and I seen that Saffron Barker had posted a screenshot of her like bedroom. And let's just say it didn't look amazing considering probably she has a huge budget let's just say and you know the house is stunning she's bought this huge house i'm gonna guess it's like bright and hove way because that's kind of where our family are from and it just wasn't given so i was like i said to i said to tom and i said to my best friend evie do you think it would be really cheeky if i posted on tiktok and did like a how i would style it and they were kind of like no no i think that would be fine and evie was like oh i don't know anyway did it and it like just blew up and I was like, oh my God, like, and Saffron commented it and she was really, really nice about it. And I was like, oh my God, like I didn't mean any offense. <laughs> I literally, I was, I was nice about it, yeah, but I did say like I'd change this, I changed that, which obviously is a little bit controversial. Um, I'm just going with this. I have no idea if this is the way around you do it because I always struggle with my powder stuff, but yeah. So that's kind of how it started. And then I remember that went to London to see Harry Styles like the, last year, summer. And like kind of started posting like vlogs and stuff, but like nothing had really like popped off. Anyway, I went to Harry Styles and on the train there, I designed how I would design Alex L's bedroom. Cause she was blowing up at the time. Like she was like the it girl of TikTok. And I was like, do you know what? Like she's never gonna see it, but like, you know, people love her. So like, I'm gonna dim it. And obviously she's got quite a quirky style. I did it like based off like, you know, going out and drinking and being with the girls and all that. Anyway, I remember sitting at the train station on the way back from her side, I was hung over because we'd had such a good night in London at Wembley. And I seen Alex Ellis commented on your TikTok and I just screamed at this train station. It was a random one. We'd had to like stop and change. And mum and dad were like, what are you screaming about? And I was like, oh my God, Alex Ellis just commented on my TikTok. She commented saying like, oh my God, love this. Where did you get your nights? Where did you get the nightstands from or something? 
And Tom, my brother, were looking at me like, what are you on about? And I was like, Alex L, like, do you not know who Alex L is? Like, she's like the it girl of TikTok. And they were like, no. So I texted Evie and I was like, you'll never guess who's just commented on my on my TikTok, Alex L. And she obviously got it. She was like, oh my God, that's amazing. So I kind of just went from there. I did Tana Mojo, who I've literally been, I've watched her YouTube for like so long since I, I was little and stuff. So did her and then just literally followed every single person I can think of an interest on Instagram famous person and now I just like watch their stories like a hawk trying to find like photos of their house and stuff and yeah that's how it went then I started doing like random people would send me like rooms and stuff so I started just doing that for free and then it kind of just took off that way and I was like okay I can't really do everyone's for free because it was taking me like hours at a time and this was kind of like at a, play a time in my life when I was like feeling so lost and like super depressed and anxious like, I can't be honest with you guys like I was going back and forth to the doctor I was like I don't know what to do with my life I felt super lost started posting on this and then people were like oh my god you've got such talent and I'd always thought I'm a clever person like did well in my A-levels but I didn't go to uni which my school was super critical of they were one of those schools that, like if you don't go to uni like what are you going to do with your life what am I doing now bronzer oh my gosh so I kind of just felt like I've spoken about this before but like just kind of really lost so then I was like oh my god I've actually got talent like I'd never been like just good at one thing I wasn't sporty I wasn't like uh, amazing at art as I said I wasn't um I didn't have like a passion I didn't want to be a lawyer I didn't want to be a doctor I was just like I knew I didn't know what I wanted to do in my life so I'd worked I'd worked as a waitress for like two years and then COVID happened and I like had the best time ever getting paid and like not having to go into work and then COVID was over and I was like okay I don't actually want to go in and serve people their roast dinners anymore because it just wasn't fun for me so that came at like the most amazing time and then I went from like doing everyone for free to like okay well I need to charge something so I started charging £25 um, a room it took me like days and hours like these things guys take me so long and then eventually like built such like a following that I was like okay I can actually up my prices to reflect like how long it takes me because like on average like I can take up to a month to do these things so like I don't know and then I started my, my like cushion business which I need to get back into here but I've kind of taken a break from it then it because I want to get all new stock and I know I keep saying that but I actually am going to do it I want to start selling it on TikTok shops so it's easier for you guys to shop so yeah that is my goal but yeah that's how I kind of fell into it and I'm just like every day spend like an hour or two creating content trying just to post consistently and yeah eventually hopefully going to be doing it professionally for the like foreseeable okay, my next question I got asked was how's Tom um I can't remember what my last update was with you guys, but basically, um, and I can't even remember what I told you actually. And he's given me full permission to talk about everything here. So we're gonna have an honest and open chat about it because he has given me permission because I didn't know how much he wanted me to share. So basically, obviously you know he was in a car accident in November. And I've talked a little bit about, about his injuries. Basically when he was in the car accident, um, the seat belt because he was, going quite quickly obviously restricted because he like crashed and like went into his really 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 hurt stomach and it like it damaged a lot of his bowels anyway he got like rushed to surgery um and they kind of told us like worst case best case and worst case scenario was that they were going to have to remove so much of his bowels that he'd have to have a costume bag fitted hearing that as a 23 year old lad and i was standing next to him and it was just like okay Worst case scenario, at least you're not dead. We got told he should have lost his legs. Like, worst case scenario, it's not gonna happen. Anyway, he was in surgery for like three, four hours of waiting around and they came and told us, you know, when they come and see you, because obviously we were in the family room and they were like, yeah, we had to put a colostomy bag in. And we were like, I was like, okay, whatever, he's alive. But I was like, I don't wanna be the one to tell Tom when he wakes up that he's got a colostomy bag because he is not gonna be happy because what 23 year old boy wants a colostomy bag? So when he woke up, I went to see him and I was like, I had to break the news to him and it was really, really rubbish and he had like a huge wobble. Now, I mean, how many months on is it? Um, four months on, he's completely used to it. It's part of his lifestyle. It's still really rubbish and we still say to like, what are we gonna, like, you know, I say to him like, you okay going on holiday with it and everything? And I'm like, it's really difficult. It's such a hard thing to navigate when we're so young. The other day we went to the hospital for an appointment before his, like, with his bowel specialist. And they told us that he is on the waiting list to have it removed this year. I'm happy for him because I know it, as much as he says it's not, 
it was getting them down. It's going to get anyone down to have that much of a huge lifestyle change because a lot of people get told they're going to have to get this and they get time to prepare and like go in for surgery or whatever. But he didn't. He woke up with it. I mean, like that is like a nightmare, really. Alves is here. Yeah, so really, 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 really rubbish news. However, that was like the first bit of good news that we've had in ages. So I would say that we are both really good. He's on the waiting list. He's going to get it done this year. Hopefully in the next couple of months, he'll have some more recovery time. It's like five nights in hospital. And then, yeah, that would just be like another stage back to normal life because I think we just want to get back to normal life now. Like this has just been like the worst time of our lives. So we just want to get back to normal life now. And that is like one step ahead. That's one step in the right direction. To answer your question, he is actually good. I think like mentally he's struggling a bit with like everything and like being off work and stuff and like, but that's another thing. So in general, he is good. He is staying positive. Would you adopt any more dogs? Was a question from my lovely, lovely follower who is actually going through chemotherapy at the minute. So I'm sending all my love to you. Um, thank you so much for watching my channel. She messaged me privately and said this. So thank you so much. Um, I'm hoping everything goes okay for you. I'm just staying positive for you. And yeah, I really, really appreciate you messaging me and watching my videos, so thank you. And I'm sending lots of love your way. So she asked me, would I adopt any more dogs? And I think the answer to that is gonna be a big fat no. I have four, and obviously, if you can hear snuffle at the minute, it's Felicity. I've got four, and because my mom's broken her leg, which is hilarious because I got a comment the other day like, were <laughs> it wasn't like it's supposed to be a funny comment but i just found it funny it was like was tom and your mom in the same ass and i was like no we just have really bad luck um by the way my neck looks really pale but it is like the same color as my face obviously my mom's broken a leg so i'm also looking after a few of hers at the minute so i think collect collectively we have 12 dogs so i'm looking after like six for my four plus like two of hers because obviously she's like can't really do much at the minute so i think that's more than enough i think like we transitioned from like we had bunny and then me and tom always wanted a pug got felicity then we were like oh my god felicity needs a brother let's get bluey and then we kind of just like fell into getting a bulldog because i was like one day like oh my god I'm impulsive i was like I, I really want to adopt a bulldog and as lovely as Elvis is, he's a huge handful. Bulldogs' personalities are so different to pugs. They are super stubborn. They are really, really demanding and needy, but not in the same way a pug is. Like, a pug is happy to sit on your knee. I personally don't find Elvis that. And I see quite a few people saying that bulldogs are really affectionate. Elvis is just not affectionate with me. And I don't know if that's... He, he is and he isn't. Like, he wouldn't just come and, like... I feel like because how big he is, he can't just like come and curl up on my knee. Like it takes like him like standing on my knee and he takes ages to settle because he's like, I don't know. I just, I think it's because in the first few, like obviously key months of his life, he probably wasn't like cuddle and baby like I cuddle and baby the pug. So anyway, very different breed to um, the pugs. So as lovely as Elvis is, I think he like counts as like three pugs. So it's basically like we have a lot more dogs than we do. So I think like he's like completed our family um, and made us realize that like, yeah, that's enough now. Do you know what you mean? Like Fliss and Blue didn't really notice like adding them in because it feels like they're just so easy. Um, the answer to that question is no. Although if I was to get another dog, I would get either a Chihuahua or a Pekingese. I met a Pekingese the other day and I am obsessed. Their like temperament is perfect. I just love them, they're like a little fluffy ball. So yeah, oh, look at that lip liner. That's absolutely tragic. You see that lip liner? This is my favorite color, it's Chippy by Morph. Um, I love the Morph lip liners and again, always ask if you're getting your makeup done like what products they're using because it always comes out really nice i asked my makeup artist what she was using and she said chippy so i like ran to morph and got it but yeah i've like used it down to the thing but i'm gonna try and use it maybe i don't know talk here i'll go in with pillow talk the charlotte talk girl i'll see how many more i can answer but i feel like i'll just be able to answer one because i just like drag it on for ages regret in the house what do i regret in the house um, i think i've already spoken about this but i do regret a lot of the utility room i regret like jumping into it i wish we'd um I wish we'd saved a bit more and been able to have like the dream, like our ideal, our ideal, um, you know what, I just don't think this is dark enough, I don't know. I wish we'd been able to have our ideal utility rather than like being like, oh my god, we just need to get it finished, we just need to save. Um, so I do regret some of that, not regret, but like, just regret not waiting like, like we did with the garden, like I'm glad we didn't do that on the cheap, do you know what I mean? Now it's like, I love it. Um, 
So, and I also regret the tiles that I picked for the floor in that. So a lot of the utility I regret. Some days I regret having the top floor, have like having three light, four light colored dogs and like that. But I will say, if you struggle with hoovering a lot, if you've got like a dark, like a hard floor and you've got like a dog that molts or kids or whatever that like drop crumbs, get a robot hoover. It has changed mine and Tom's life. Like I used to hoover. Oh my God, so much. I used to spend so much of my life hoovering. And I've seen Olivia Atwood said that too, but get a robot hoover girl because this one is the Samsung one, the Samsung Jackpot. A little bit tricky to set up, but once it's all set up, it's fine. And uh, you just use your phone to like turn it on. Like you can do it when you're out and stuff. A little bit, sometimes the dark floor. I just feel like sometimes, like most of the time you're gonna want what you don't have. And like when I see like, Oh, lovely white oak floor, like really light, like, you know, like, a bit like, I think Chloe has, Chloe Kardashian has in her house. I think, oh, I wish I'd gone for that. I do love my dark floor because it's so different and like, do you know what I mean? I feel like everyone gets light oak. Like, you want to be a little bit different. You don't want to like, I don't know. I feel like that's why my house has done quite well, like, has like helped me like get onto TikTok because it's a little bit, it's mostly different from a lot of houses you see. So my recommendation, if you're doing your house or your plan of your house or you're literally just like, yeah thinking about it whatever go a bit out there because like i was you know my bathroom my own sweet tiles that you all love they're out there but everyone loves them and like um my sofa's a bit out there like everyone goes for creams and neutrals i thought no let's go for green and like stuff like that like dark floor i've got a ceiling fan in my room like just go for it like as long as you like it and i guarantee you most other people like it and your house will be unique and different like i've never seen anyone with a house like mine so so they're probably my regrets, mainly. I have gone back in with Chippy because I think Pillow Talk was a little bit, um, a little bit light. I mean, with Pillow Talk, the thing, and then I think I'm gonna go in. So Pillow Talk, the lipstick, and then, also how cute are my spring nails? Shout out to Olivia Does Nails, my nail girl. I went to her this morning, love them, and I even took blue. Um, and then I'm gonna go in with this Walk of Shame um lip gloss from charlotte tilbury you can't tell already charlotte tilbury is my favorite i'll try and answer one more oh inspo accounts to follow if you're like getting into like interior or if you're just like if you enjoy looking at it or if you're doing your own house whatever my i will put them below um because i can't think off the top of my head but i know i can picture them obviously sophie patterson laura hammett or hamlet i can't remember which one it is um the only annoying thing about things like accounts like that is because everything's bespoke they never tag where anything is from so you've got to like really do your research if you find a photo like that it's like pinterest it's like you know when you find like an american thing and you're like does that exist in the uk like it's so annoying trying to like google for it but yeah definitely worth it because i think you get like ideas for like colors and colors that go together well and like layouts of rooms and like ideas for like wallpaper and stuff i'm doing a nursery right now and we're thinking of putting the wallpaper in between the paneling so I've seen that someone do that and I think it looks really nice. I think I've seen someone do that in their bedroom. Do I follow? I think it might be Home by Lils. She's like, I think she lives in Liverpool and I really like what she's done with her wallpaper and panelling in her bedroom. I'll put her below, you guys go follow her because her house is really lovely. She's had a kitchen done and it is stunning. So yeah, I think that's all the questions I answered that well, I couldn't answer all of them, but I've answered the majority of them. I thought I was gonna be able to answer more, so I have got more written down, but I'm all ready now. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a like and subscribe. I'm trying to hit a thousand subscribers before summer, so if you could, that'd be amazing. And please let me know what else you guys wanna see in the comments. If you enjoyed this, if you want me to go back to my usual vlogging, if you wanna see the dogs, if you wanna see Tom, if you wanna see us, if you want me to do a Q&A with someone else in my family, please let me know. And yeah, hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you next Thursday.